The plan for today's soap, um, this is my second time um, recently, like in the last year, making a coffee cold process soap. And what I'm gonna be doing this time is blending 75%, um, let's see if I can get this to focus, there we go. I think, um, hazelnut coffee. So 75% of that with 25% of Brambleberry's espresso. And I'm really excited because this espresso fragrance by Brambleberry, it's one of the first coffee fragrances that I've ever worked with. And it's also one of my all time favorite. Um, I've often said that it is my all time favorite coffee fragrance, but it is known to accelerate trace in cold process soap. Um, so Brambleberry actually doesn't even recommend it for cold process. So I like to do when I'm working with fragrances that accelerate trace is to work at a really cool temperature. So right now my oils are at 80 degrees Fahrenheit and um, that is cool. Um, I'd like it to be just a little bit cooler. So what I'm gonna do while I'm waiting for that, um, my lye water solution is at room temperature. I'm gonna grab those. Okay, so my lye water solutions are at room temperature and this is my first time ever making a double batch in my um, in my pot. And a double batch meaning I literally doubled <laughs> my normal recipe. So instead of making six pounds of soap, I'm gonna be making 12 pounds of soap. Um, and the fragrances that I'm working with do cause discoloration to I believe tan or brown. And so, um, the Brambleberry one gets pretty dark, so I just wanna add about um, maybe two tablespoons of TD. So each of these is one teaspoon. So I'm gonna add two tablespoons or thereabouts. And I know some people do pre-dissolve this stuff. Um, I just opt to dissolve it right into my oils, but um, I have pre-dissolved it before in just a lightweight oil. Um, but if you do that, you always want to make sure you take it from your batch. Unless you have a really low super fat, I would say, then you just might get a little more super fat. Um, and then the other thing I want to do here is add in some espresso grounds. And I'm thinking I just want to use a tablespoon for this whole batch. Because the last time I did this, I went a little crazy in the soap. Um, coffee is one of the most coarse exfoliants, I think, um, for the skin. And so I want to go lighter than I did the last time with those. Um, and I'm going to stick blend these in. And then after that, hopefully these get cooler. Um, these oils get cooler. And then I will add my lye water solution. And I actually have two because it's in single batches. Um, and then after that, I will hand stir in my fragrance. I'm not gonna do anything crazy with this soap. It's just gonna be a single colored soap. Um, and then for the top, I did also get gonna burp the stick blender here. Um, I did also get some espresso grounds, um, or espresso beans, I should say. And these are from my local um, coffee shop, um, Madcap Coffee. It's actually about an hour from where I live. And they're my all-time favorite coffee beans, so I had to put them on my soap just because I'm so passionate about my soap. And the espresso that I use, the ground espresso, um, this is Illy brand. Not that that matters at all. It's just my favorite brand of espresso, so you know I had to put that in my soap. I think I'm gonna do one more tablespoon of TD. So it'll be a total of three tablespoons, um, but that is with like almost 10 pounds of oils. Um, and I just, because I really wanna make sure, this is gonna get a lot darker, and I really wanna make sure that um, I don't get a super dark um, chocolatey color. I want more of like a um, lighter kind of brown. So I'm just gonna pulse the stick blender with this and get this one incorporated here. This feels like what my pot is made to do. Okay, so we are now at 
Um, still 80.9 degrees Fahrenheit. Um, and my lye water solutions, I'm gonna check them, but they are gonna be at room temperature, which is not, yeah, 68, 69. So I like my lye water solutions to be at least within 10 degrees of my oils. And just so you all can see, um, I put notes on my lye water solutions. So these are pre-batched and this is what I just started doing recently and it's been working really well for me. Um, so from what I have read, you can keep these up to two weeks. So the date today that I'm making this soap is the second. So these are not even one week old and yeah, so what I'm gonna do to get these a little bit warmer is I'm going to take my Bunsen burner and just, I will not set these on a burner, like that would be a big no-no, but I just wanna hover them over it a little bit so that I can get these a little bit warmer, um, just so that it's not uh, more than 10 degrees temperature difference to my oils. And just so you can see how I do this, um, I don't do this for very long. It's just to get them a few degrees warmer um, and I'll hold it like six inches above the Bunsen burner. Just want to get that a little bit warmer. Now, some people might ask, why don't you just get your oils a little bit cooler? You know, put them in, um, surround them, the pot in an ice bath or something. The reason for that is because with these oils, if they get any cooler, I use a substantial amount of shea butter and coconut oil. And if they get any cooler, um, I am likely to um, get false trace. And that is when you're making soap and you think that you are at um, emulsification. And what has really happened is the oils have um, just, you know, hardened. And because you're soaping at such a cool temperature and so I don't generally like to let my oils get anywhere lower than um, 80 degrees. I have occasionally let them get to 75, but that is very um, unusual for me. Um, so just trying to get a few degrees warmer on this. Okay, so our lye water solutions are now at 75 and our oils are at 79, so that's really good. And as I mentioned, I have two lye water solutions just because I had pre-batched these as singles and then I decided at the last minute to do a double batch for the first time. Um, so, this is my very first time ever attempting something like this. And I am gonna strain my lye water solutions just because they have some lye lint, which is absolutely harmless. It's just that it will not look as good in the soap. Um, so I'm just gonna strain these. There goes one. Here goes our second one. And just so you all can see, if you're unfamiliar, I don't know if that shows or not on the camera, um, but it just looks kind of like lint. And I just returned my strainer right into my lye um, designated containers and I will put the lids back onto my containers um, or onto the one container I should say and then put those off to the side and so now I'm going to um, just stick blend this to emulsion and then we're going to stir in our fragrance and hope that we can get this in the mold. You know what, I'm gonna grab a spatula too. 
and this is a technique I've seen Holly do a lot with Missouri River Soap when she's doing her really big batches. She will have a spatula as well as the stick blender just so she can kind of make sure all those little bits are mixed in. And I'm more or less just pulsing the stick blender. I'm not um, wanting to go crazy with it. Oh, those coffee grounds are just suspending beautifully in there too. All right, so I'm gonna call that at emulsification and I'm going to hand stir in our fragrance, which already smells so amazing. Like it has made my whole house, just the whole downstairs floor smell so good and I haven't even stirred it in yet. Just having it, like that's how strong this Brambleberry Espresso is. And the Candle Science fragrance I love too, the hazelnut coffee, but the Brambleberry Espresso just has a really special place in my heart. I'm gonna try not to do any stick blending here. Oh my God, it smells so good. So this is 75% um, of the hazelnut coffee. So that fragrance is supposed to be very well behaved in cold process soap, which was exactly my experience when I worked with it the last time. So I'm not expecting too much crazy from this at all. Like I'm expecting it to be really well behaved. I'm just being conservative with it because it's my first time ever making this double batch. But I'm so excited to be doing this, you all. Like this pot just feels like it was made to do this. And again, just so you can really see here how fluid this batter is, let me try to zoom you in. So hopefully you can really see, but this batter is not even, I wouldn't even consider this, it's a very light trace. And just so you can see, um, fragrances that accelerate um, like Brambleberry doesn't even recommend using their espresso fragrance in cold process soap, but fragrances that accelerate, I think you absolutely can use them, but you just wanna soap at a really cool temperature, have everything planned out, and you want to um, not use additives um, like clays or milks or sugars in your soap, if possible, at least when you are experimenting, because those are all gonna accelerate your trace more and blending in your colorants and then just hand stirring in your fragrance after your soap has emulsified. Um, is that emulsion is the way I like to do it. Okay, I'm gonna pour this into the mold. Oh my gosh, I'm so excited. This is my very first time ever doing this. It took me like a minute as well to get the camera in place to move the camera so that you all could see the molds. And this batter is still very fluid. Like it has not, it's been very well behaved. Oh, it's gorgeous. So I'm gonna go like halfway on that one. And then... This pot, by the way, is from Target. And the spout is so nice to have. It's really a lifesaver. I can't imagine doing this without the spout. So I'm gonna go like halfway there. And I'm just gonna tap, just in case there's any air bubbles on these and then do the other half. These smell so, so divine. These are the Winston and Walter molds, the tall and skinny, and I adore them. I adore them. One of these molds, I think the one that I'm pouring into now, I just sealed it yesterday. I spent like all day sealing it with the, um, with the, um, I can't remember the name of it. I'll put the name up on the screen. 
but oh my gosh. These coffee grounds just suspended beautifully too. So I'm thinking that the soap is gonna get a little bit darker as it cures, and that is gonna make it perfect for me. Color-wise, exactly what I'm going for. So I'm gonna leave them right there, and then just tap this out a little bit more and try not to spill. This is when I always make a big mess. Got the camera like balanced above too. So I'm at a really weird angle doing this. So I'm gonna let these set up. And as you can see how well that fragrance behaved. Um, and again, I only had a quarter of, of the espresso from Brambleberry in this blend, but next time, if I wanna bring out more of the espresso character and bring down some of the chocolate character, of this one because this is more of like a sweet chocolatey um, coffee fragrance I would use a 50-50 instead of the um, 3 to 1 the 75-25 so I'm gonna just I'm gonna just let these set up a little bit probably for like 10 minutes before I um, or in the rest of this. And then the idea on top, I was thinking of just adding on these after I get a nice, really textured top. And then maybe some of the espresso grounds. Um, these are the Illy espresso grounds. Oh, I am so, so happy with this so far. Okay, so I left for like five minutes, I would say maybe six or seven. And this is set up really beautifully. Um, I'm gonna scoop the rest of this, or try to scoop the rest of this onto my soaps here. And then we will texture. Oh, it's gorgeous. I love the texture of this batter. Like this is like my ideal trace. This last part is definitely the hardest for me to get this out. I like to get every last bit of my soap out of my pot. And it's definitely the hardest to get the last bits, but I am determined to develop arm strength. I know I could pour this into smaller containers. I have some smaller containers, but I am determined. I notice my soap lobes, like at the end of the loaf, is where I often have the least amount of batter. Oh my god, this is setting up. Okay. I need to stop talking so much and get to texturing here. What I'm gonna try to do is just go in. with my spoon. Oh yeah, this is perfect. It's perfect. Just need like a paper towel nearby is what I like to have, but I don't. I'm gonna go grab one. So I like to keep one nearby just so that way I can do this kind of thing when I go around the molds. And just so I can wipe any little bit that gets onto the sides of my mold. But oh my gosh, this texture, I live for this texture. It is the most satisfying part of my day to do this. And actually it is still a little bit too thin for me. So I think I'm gonna probably be able to work with this. You know what, I like to start out with the fork usually. And then, yeah, the fork is what I usually do. It takes me forever though to get the look I'm going for. Like, as I mentioned, this is in no way a tutorial. It's my journey making soap. And those of you who are really seasoned professionals, 
you are welcome to correct anything that I'm doing that is not um, technically correct, but yeah, this is kind of the look I'm wanting with this, I think. But I want more. See, I just keep playing with it until I get what I like. Need a spoon rest here. Something like this. And then I want the other side as well with it. Oh yeah. Something like that. So kind of like a double wave almost. I don't know if there's a technical term for this. <laughs> and I can definitely feel those coffee grounds as I'm going around this. Okay. And then I'm gonna do this one. Oh my gosh. Yeah, this is the texture I love to work with though, because look at those peaks you can get. Hope you're able to see. Um, you can get them so easily with this texture. Like this is magical. I'm telling you all who are new to soaping, do not be afraid of thick trace. It is where your texture imagination is able to just like come out and play. The only thing stopping you is your own creativity with texture when you have thick trace. I just like these plastic forks from the Dollar Tree um, is what I usually use because they don't have any aluminum, which is something that you always want to stay away from when you are working with lye. And so, the next thing I want to do here, I think I want to tap these down just a little bit more, just in case there's any air bubbles came about when I was doing the added texture. I think that's one of my biggest challenges with soap is air bubbles. I do tend to get quite a lot of air bubbles. Okay, and then I'm gonna go around this again, just because I usually find that I have to like shave stuff off with my soaps and trying to minimize that. I do plan to do the yearly soap scrap donations, but I'm just trying to minimize the amount of waste that I have. I'm really liking how this is turning out. This is so beautiful. Like it's just a simple soul soothing soap. I usually try to go much more elaborate, but there's something about just your basic classic soaps that can just be so lovely. Um, so the next thing I want to do, and I don't have these marked, um, but I want to place like some espresso beans down the middle of these. And I'm hoping to get one per bar, but we're just going to have to see. I think I'll put them horizontally. Actually, I like the look of them better with the coffee bean up. I don't know. I think coffee is just good no matter how you place it. Maybe try one vertically. And put some on this guy. 
guy. Yeah, I have no idea where these cuts are gonna work. That's the problem with this. Oop. And something like that, I don't know if you can see, um, I would just get it with my forceps later. I have a stainless steel forceps and I will link them down below. They can be really useful or tweezers as long as they're stainless steel, um, but they can be really useful if you're trying to grab things um, off of your soap if they didn't get placed just where you wanted. I don't think I'm gonna spray this one. Um, no, I wish I would have done the beans differently on this one, but that's okay. Yeah, I don't think I'm gonna spray it. I think maybe, I hope I don't overdo this, but maybe, just maybe, a little bit of espresso down the middle here will, oh yeah, that looks, that's what I'm going for. Oh, I just want to eat it. Now I'm probably going to overdo this. But the thing is, it will, some of it will come off when I go to cut the soap. And I'm just trying to focus it in the center. Get like a little coffee trail down the center. And a lot of this will just come off in people's um, showers. Like they're not gonna, it's more just aesthetic. The coffee down the top, it's really just aesthetic, but oh, I love that. I love the effect of it. I'm gonna do just a little more on these ones. I wish I had put the beans facing upward now, but I will just remember that for next time. I still think it looks gorgeous. Just the simplicity. And I think that that is gonna be finished. Um, let me show you all how I will do with the forceps. So these are stainless steel, and I think I got them on Amazon, and I will try to link them. But if there's something on here that I don't want, you can just grab it. And you could do this with tweezers as well. Um, some people actually like to place things with these on their soaps too. But I tend to just use them to remove things. Should I add more beans on these? Cause I don't know where the soap's gonna get cut. Yeah, next time I'm gonna have to measure this out. Ah, should I try to turn these ones? I wonder if I even could. No, I'm, I'm gonna, I'm gonna just have to keep it for something for next time because they're already pretty much placed on there. And like with a copper um, mica. I wonder what that would look like. I'm probably just gonna make these fall off easier because I'm kind of dislodging them. But I sort of like the wonky look when they're like half coming out of the soap. I 
love it. I love it. Okay. excited to unmold this so this soap I'm finding that these sides are much easier to get off when I don't like spill soap in the cracks of them <laughs> um, with these molds this is my favorite thing to do so I like to spin it around and then I like to pull this down oh look at that yes do you all see that? Oh, beauty. I hope it's in the camera. Um, okay, and then I'm gonna pull this side off here. And I just kind of finagle them. Um, that is a technical term by the way. <laughs> and then this second mold, um, this is the one that I had sealed. And the one thing I do not care for with the sealer and the varnish from Earthsay Finishes is that it does leave like a little bit of a, kind of like a glossy, like tacky feel almost to the exterior. Okay, let's see what this one's like. Ah, oh, can you all hear that sound? Yes, gorgeous. This might be a little bit soft to unmold here, but I need these molds because I'm gonna make an activated charcoal soap tonight. And I only have two salt mold molds. I, um, donated my other ones. I had some smaller ones that I started out with before I got these, but I donated them to Goodwill because I just figured since I hadn't used them in like six months that somebody else would um, probably enjoy them. Okay. So this is gonna be the hard part is, I don't think I'm gonna be able to, trying to get one espresso um, on each bar and kind of in the middle. And I did not measure this. So that was kind of the first mistake. Um, so yeah, we're just gonna have to go for it. Okay, here we go. Some of them just fell off. Oh. Oh! So let me just show you some of these bars. They are still pretty soft. This soap was made yesterday and it did behave really well. The only thing is it is going a little bit yellow as opposed to just a straight brown or tan like it said. Um, so, I mean, it's not terrible. It's just, it may darken more. Um, I just want you to be aware of that. And this little guy doesn't have an espresso ground, but <laughs> that's okay. It's, that's the beauty of a handmade product. Um, yeah, there's a couple of these that, and see his espresso ground is a little bit off center and this guy doesn't have one. But you know what? I am not mad about this at all because I'm actually surprised how many did get an espresso ground for me not measuring this at all. So. Like, 
look at that. Isn't that adorable? I think these are cute. You know, just a nice, simple, classic bar. One thing I will say about coffee in general is that it is much more coarse than I originally thought. I made my first coffee soap bars like, um, I think two and a half years ago. And I was like, oh yeah, coffee, it's great, you know? And I threw like three tablespoons in a small loaf of soap and I was like, oh my gosh, this feels like I'm using sandpaper in the shower. So I'm just gonna go in and just clean off um, these last, um, the closest ones so that when I cut the remainder of my loaf, I won't have any of that old soap dragging through it. It's not gonna hurt the bar. It's just not as aesthetically pleasing as I want. Um, but again, I'm not a perfectionist with my soap. I do wanna figure out though why my cutter is like, like some of my bars, I keep saying this, and since I filmed a bunch of these videos, one after the other, um, before posting them, you all will probably have helped me with this by now, but there's just a little bit where you can see. Um, and I could just go in there with a cheese cutter. I know someone said that as well, and I think that's a marvelous idea. Okay, I'm gonna try to just center these a little bit here. There we go. Maybe it's a little bit more over. Okay. Oh, it feels like butter. I tightened my cutter. <laughs> oh. So nice. I do think it's cutting better though, in general. Yeah, so for this whole loaf, um, I have got, okay, that guy doesn't have an espresso ground, but all but I think three or four bars have a coffee ground from this loaf. Let's see, yeah, one, two, um, I think four bars, yeah, four bars didn't get one. And then these scraps here, like this, I would just throw into um, my donation bin for Haiti, um, where I'm gonna be upcycling these. And if you have any questions about that, please reach out to Nia Handcrafted because I've never done it. It's just something that I wanna try, um, but she's the one who told me about it. And this here is what I will use for my soap samples. So I like to just, um, give people who purchase my soaps just a little sample of a product um, that they might also like to try. And then we're gonna cut this other loaf here. See if I can, I think this other loaf, yeah, this other loaf was the one that I did second. So I don't know, I feel like I did even less measuring with the other one. <laughs> I was just kind of like going crazy and throwing things on there. So we're gonna have to see. I think if I do this soap again, I would add 50% um, of the Brambleberry Espresso. It's really nice. It's just a little sweeter than I would like because I did use 75% of that Candle Science hazelnut coffee, which is a really sweet kind of bakery um, type of a fragrance. To me, it smells more like a sugary, sweet hazelnut latte than espresso, which is, what it's meant to smell like, I think. Um, okay. Okay, and then for the second loaf here, I'm gonna do the same thing that I've been enjoying and just set it like that. And I'm gonna just kind of look at it and see. Oop, I just knocked the corner of it. Oh, I dented it. I'm just gonna see. Yeah, about like that, I would say. Um, Just looking here, I'm trying to see. Yep, I would place it about like this. Okay, we're gonna go for it. Ah! Okay, we just lost three. Okay. Let's see what we got here. 
here. I don't know the formal way to like pull these off. Okay. So we've got these first three. They're a little soft, so I don't wanna play with them too much here. And then we got, ooh. Oh, yeah, we lost two on this one. But it still looks cute with the coffee on the top, you know? I think next time I'm just gonna measure it out better. I didn't measure at all. I just kind of was like a five-year-old just throwing them on there. But I am overall pretty happy with this. I am gonna wait to bevel this soap though because um, it's so soft and it's actually easier to bevel the soaps after they have hardened more. You're just not gonna run into all that. You got two out of three on this one. Um, you're just not gonna run into all that on your vegetable peeler where it sticks as much, but I still don't really like my vegetable peeler, so <laughs> anyone who has a suggestion for me, um, feel free to drop it in the comments because my vegetable peeler is from the Dollar Tree and although I love so much from the Dollar Tree, the vegetable peeler is just not one thing that they excel in for soap cutting. At least I'm not in love with it. <laughs> Got these last little piece, little piece here. About like that. I'm just visually trying to, oh, that cuts like butter. Can you all hear the rain outside? I don't know if my microphone will cover it or not. It probably will. And then something like this, again, I would just cut it up into samples. And these last three here. Oh, I'm so happy with this. I know it's not perfect, but it's just so satisfying to me to have a good coffee espresso soap. 